What's up, Tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tailgate Nate today. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my week four top 25 video. And I'll be honest with all you fine people with the limited amount of chaos going on throughout this past week. There really is not that much to update here with my top 25, but there are a couple one of changes I want to talk about very, very briefly, but I'm hoping very much so hoping that this top 25 video is a lot shorter than my usual videos for all of you fine people out there. But hey, thank you so much for watching this video and taking time out of your day to do so. If you're as big of a college football nerd as I am, you might as well consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that bell so you know whenever I upload because I post a ton of content during the college football season. As we get deeper into the season, a lot more sort of specialty videos and features and whatnot will be coming out. But speaking of features, if you want to see some of the feature stories that I write for my school newspaper, if you want to listen to games that I call, if you want to follow along with my journey to be a sports media professional and support me in any way outside of YouTube, please go give me a follow, follow on Twitter or X, whatever you prefer to call it, at TailgateNate29, capital T, capital N, numbers 2-9 at the end is my at. Really, really appreciate you guys giving me the support over there, and I really appreciate all the support I get in general. Interact with the channel any way you can. It all helps to support it. Guys, let's go ahead and move on to my week four top 25. I'm wasting no more time. We're just going to dive right on into it. As per usual, have a couple of honorable mentions that I would like to mention here. Teams that were close to breaking into the top 25, but just didn't end up making my final list. Lots of group of five teams are on here. Liberty, UNLV, NIU, and Memphis, all group of five teams that are all here on my honorable mention list. But let's talk about one more. How about the Washington State Cougars, man, after starting off last season really hot and tailing off and now sort of a lot of uncertainty with Cam Ward gone and a lot of other transfers leaving. They just went ahead and beat Washington in a neutral site in Seattle at Lumen Field. Washington State's absolutely a team you got to watch out for. One of the two members of the Pac-2, and I know that conference has just expanded now, but as it currently stands, one of the two Pac-2 members, they're looking to break on into my top 25 poll if they continue their success. Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana are up here. We all know why Iowa's here. Their defense is going to win them games, and I mean, if they just keep winning enough games, they're going to break back into the top 25 as well as their offense is much more improved. How about the Illinois fighting a lion eye, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think they've been on this list for the past couple of weeks now. Again, very, very close to breaking into my top 25. Illinois is just uh, the, w one of those teams to where, look, everything's gone well for them so far. The defense has played better than last year. Luke Altmeyer has been more consistent and has played better than last year. The skill positions are working really well. The offensive line's played good. Illinois is one of those teams, especially if they're going to be able to pull off a win against the Nebraska team this week that I have ranked. A little spoiler alert there, not really. But yes, Illinois, uh, definitely a team that could break into the top 25 poll. And again, Indiana, one of those teams there as well. They've looked really good so far. If they continue to win, who knows, they find they may find their way into my top 25 poll. Look, I uh, did not think that the AP poll uh, had deserved Boston, had really clarified the Boston College ranking. I didn't think that Boston College belonged in my AP or in the AP poll. They didn't belong in my poll, at least my top 25. But after that performance against Missouri, guys, I was proven wrong. I think Boston College is going to be a pretty dangerous team in the ACC this season. Uh, they definitely are going to give some teams their fair share of challenge. And even though they lost to a really good team on the road in Columbia, Missouri, of course, in the Missouri Tigers, they're right here looking to break back into the poll in the Arizona Wildcats. Tough loss this week against Kansas State in which he got absolutely dominated, but that's a good team. They can break back into the poll there as well. Another team that's not on this list, I just didn't have room to put their logo up here, is South Carolina. They did just lose that pass game against the LSU Tigers, but South Carolina is another one of those teams that you could throw on the honorable mention list as well. Hey, those are the teams that didn't make my poll. Who did make my poll? Let's go ahead and start out with number 25. No movement from last week are the Boise State Broncos. I don't believe Boise State went ahead and played this past week. No, they did not. They ended up having a bye week, and you move on into this next week here. Oh, well, Boise State has got a date with Portland State. But again, the reason I have Boise State ranked, their only loss right now is to an Oregon team that looked much, much better this week here uh, against the uh, Oregon State Beavers. We'll talk about that performance a little bit later here in this video. But again, I think Boise State is the best group of five team, and I know that Northern Illinois is ranked right now. Again, that team is pretty close. You could even make a case for Toledo. Once Miami starts to win games, I know their non-conference has been rough, but 
Miami of Ohio is a team that can get up there as well. Boise State, to me, guys, Ashton Genty, best running back in college football, best team in the group of five. Uh, and because they didn't play last week, well, they didn't move. They're right there at 25. The only new team into my poll with the loss of, oh, who was it that was in my poll that lost this past week? Give me one second. I don't know how I forgot, but it was the Arizona Wildcats, of course. So with Arizona losing, dropping out of my poll, and maybe if that game would have been close, I wouldn't have dropped the Arizona Wildcats out, but they did lose, so I dropped them out. Texas A&M is back into the top 25 poll. You go on the road, you get a big win against Florida, probably more detrimental for the Gators than it was uplifting and a big deal for the Texas A&M Aggies, but still a really, really big deal for that program and for Texas A&M to get back on the right foot to be able to win that game. That's a really big thing for them. They're back in the poll here. Mike Elko, again, Texas A&M, dangerous team in the uh, the SEC this season. Syracuse did not play this past week, I do not believe. I will actually fact check uh, my words there in just one second. No, they did not play this past week, but they have started out 2-0. Kyle McCord has looked really, really good, even though he's only played two games to one of the leaders in passing touchdowns. Syracuse defense has stepped up and made a lot of big plays this year. They get Stanford this week. That's a Friday game. To me, Syracuse, one of the better teams in the ACC, at, at least so far this season. I think they can be really dangerous in the Orange. Move up one spot because Arizona lost, even though they didn't play this past week. Nebraska beat an FCS-level team in Northern Iowa, a team that wasn't even ranked in the FCS, and there were a little bit of struggles in the first half, but they were able to pull away. Looked really good. Dylan Royola continues to do his thing. Did throw his first collegiate pick, but nothing to worry about with Nebraska. This team is going to be just fine. Huge matchup with Illinois coming up. Th two teams in the Big Ten that are currently sitting 3-0. and oh. That should be a really, really fun one. Friday night lights for that one. Nebraska and Illinois. Can't wait to see how that one shakes out. Nebraska is here at number 22. Iowa State also did not play this past week, so don't really can't really move them up and down. But I'll echo the same sentiment that I did with Iowa State th uh, there this past week when I did rank them. Rocco Beck has played really, really well. You take a look at Iowa State elsewhere as a whole. Just overall, they feel like a really, really good complete team, a team that can compete in the Big 12 Conference. Maybe a couple things to fix here and there. They get Arkansas State this week, but overall, Iowa State, I mean, again, much of the same things I said this past week. Really good performance against Iowa by week. Much needed, I'm sure, for them. Okay, again, Told you this was going to go a little bit faster, probably on the same pace that I normally am on. But let's go ahead and move on now into my top 20. Louisville and Clemson, they both do not move either. Uh, I believe both of them even ended up having some bye weeks of their own. Give me one second here. Um, yes, Louisville nor Clemson played this past week. So again, two teams on bye. I can't really move them, but Louisville and Clemson. Clemson, of course, does have that loss to Georgia, but we all know that Georgia is one of the best teams in the country here. Louisville is yet to really be a huge marquee opponent, and the biggest team they've beaten so far in Jacksonville State has not really performed that well up to this point. I, in fact, I still don't think they have a win in that column. Well, you get a chance to get a really big win this week when Georgia Tech comes to town, and Georgia Tech, they're able to win that game. Well, you might very well see the Yellow Jackets, another team you could put in the honorable mention list back in the top 25 poll. And Clemson this week has NC State. So another really big, vital, important matchup for Clemson uh, this week to really get uh, some momentum building here. We know NC State has had their struggles, but still would be a big spot for Clemson if they're able to get that win. I have flip-flopped Michigan and Notre Dame. I mean, Michigan, do they make the switch to Alex Orgy at quarterback one? Davis Warren, while every pass of his was complete, Three of them were completed to the wrong team. He threw three picks against Arkansas State, no touchdowns. The run game helped Michigan win that game. And the scoreboard is going to mislead you. That was really a 28 to three game. And they just let Arkansas State score a couple points here and there in garbage time. Didn't really matter. Michigan was still going to win. Yes, does it look a little bit worse on this team? Sure, yeah, absolutely. I mean, me sitting here saying it doesn't matter, it does because it matters how your team plays for a full 60 minutes. Michigan defense is going to lead them to a ton of wins, but that Michigan offense is really, really struggling, guys. It, it, it is just they need to find some rhythm, and they need to find quarterback play. The rush game has been pretty solid for them this season. They need to find good quarterback play. They need to find their wide receivers uh, taking a step up, and Michigan is not going to have much success, especially with some of their tougher teams this season if their quarterback play continues to play like this. Again, you got a huge game against USC in the big house this week. We'll see how that one goes 
for the Michigan Wolverines. Talk about a bounce back game from for Notre Dame after the confusing loss to the Northern Illinois Huskies. Notre Dame, what, to what a lot of people think, oh, maybe Purdue is going uh, to shock them here. Maybe Notre Dame is back to back let down games. It was the complete opposite. A 66 to 7 beat down of the Purdue uh, Boilermakers. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish are back now. It is Purdue, not projected to be one of the Big Ten's better teams this year, so I only move them up one spot. But if Notre Dame continues to play like that, continues to win games like that, they're assuredly going to rise here in my poll. And Oklahoma really did struggle with Tulane. We saw Tulane give a battle uh, to Kansas State this past week uh, before they played uh, Oklahoma this past weekend, so two, we uh, two weekends ago if you will. And Tulane made that game really, really scary and really, really close. But Oklahoma's defense came up with some big plays. Jackson Arnold came up with some huge throws and Oklahoma was able to survive the upset against the Tulane Green Wave. Again, Tulane, one of the better teams in group of five. So absolutely no shame there. But the Oklahoma Sooners got a little bit of things to try to figure out here. But overall, they got their first SEC game coming up against the Tennessee Volunteers. They get them in Norman. If Oklahoma can win that one, well, they can show to the nation that, hey, we're ready to compete in the SEC. That should be a very interesting matchup to watch, to say the least. Let's dive on into the top 15 here. Woo, did LSU avoid a scare? Penalties and turnovers cost South Carolina in that game. And again, you could argue there were a lot of calls that ended up going the way of LSU there in the late stages of that game. But South Carolina had their shot to send that thing to overtime. South Carolina had a ton of chances to put that game away. But again, penalties and turnovers really did kill South Carolina there in the late stages of that game. LSU was able to survive. And again, even though the LSU defense needs some work still, we especially saw that in the South uh, Carolina game. They really did let Lenora Sellers do whatever he wanted as soon as he got out there of that pocket. But when you take a look at, at the LSU Tigers, I mean, Garrett Nussmeyer still playing fantastically. They had just an insane performance from, uh, why can't, uh, Durham. Uh, the Durham, the uh, freshman running back, if he is not your freshman running back, as Noah Kane still, uh, still battles out with injury, and you need someone to step in there to be that primary running back for the LSU Tigers this season. I really have no idea how it's not Durham that steps in there and plays because, I mean, he absolutely showed out there in that past game. I'll get you the exact stat line right there. I was uh, uh, pulling it up. Caden Durham, 11 carries for 98 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, uh, again, when you take a look at, and uh, sorry, not Noah Kane. What what am I thinking? Oh my goodness. that 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 is such a blooper. I don't even know where Noah Kane came from. John Emery. John Emery. Okay, that is the name that I'm thinking of. Not Noah Kane. John Emery. Okay, John Emery. As he continues to deal with injury, I mean, Caden Durham is a guy that absolutely can step in, play some really big minutes. He proved himself in that pass game against the South Carolina Gamecocks. Oh boy, people are going to clip that. That's going to be a blooper reel everywhere. It's okay. It's fine. LSU does move up one spot there to number 15. I have also flip-flopped Kansas State and Oklahoma State. And the only reason for that is, look, Oklahoma State was very, very impressive this past week. They shut out a, a Tulsa team that, again, could fare to be a pretty solid team in the American Athletic this season. But for the Kansas State Wildcats, beating a team in the Arizona Wildcats, again, battle of the Wildcats there in Manhattan. For Kansas State to shut Arizona out like they did to limit Tay Tyrell and McMillan, for the defense to step up, play really well, for the offense to explode, another punt return touchdown for Kansas State. It seems like they have four or five of them every single season. In fact, there was a stat floating out there that they have the most kickoff and punt return touchdown since like 2005 or something like that. I don't remember uh, the, the exact set, and I don't have it here in front of me. But Kansas State's played some really good football. Uh, now Oklahoma State is the one that has the interesting matchup with Utah coming up a little bit later. So that'll be a very interesting and fun one. We'll see how that one plays out for both of those programs, and it will be a game preview prediction that you'll find here on my channel. USC and Utah are here at number 12 and 11. I did not move them from the their uh, previous matchup. Now, Utah, again, Cam Rising just cannot catch a freaking break, right? He was out for this game, and you saw Utah struggle against the Utah State Aggies, the rivalry game. But what ended up happening, defense stepped up, defense played really, really well, made a lot of very, very big plays, and Utah was able to solidify their win there in that game. And then for the USC Trojans, 
Don't believe they ended up playing this past week. If they did, I am just forgetting who they did play. No, they did not play. So they get that bye week before they have to go on the road and play the Michigan Wolverines. First Big Ten test for the USC Trojans. We'll see how they handle it there in the big house. Going to be a very, very interesting game. So USC and Utah do not move there. Okay, let's move on into the top 10 and not really a whole lot of changes here. The only notable change that I did make was switching Miami and Missouri there at 9 and 10. And my reasoning for that being, again, every time I watch Miami, I just look, I, I, I just get more and more and more impressed by what the Hurricanes have put on the field so far this season. And when I watched Missouri this past week, it's not that they looked bad at all, guys. And I mean, look, you, you beat a really quality opponent in Boston College. Again, a team that I did not have that high of an opinion of and didn't feel like they deserved to be ranked and the whole nine yards they're right but at the end of the day Missouri did, does now have a top 25 win under their belt they did be a quality uh, opponent it's just I've been really really impressed with the way that Miami has performed and Missouri did have their struggles against the Boston College team that again albeit probably will not finish the season ranked at least that's the way that my thinking is going as of right now but regardless I just have Miami and Missouri switched at this moment. Uh, definitely something that could change later down the line. Oregon didn't play, uh, or no, they did play this past week, and they actually looked a whole, whole, whole lot better in the game against the Oregon State Beavers. Hey, they did not allow a sack in that game. The offensive line finally feels like it's starting to come together, and everything else was on full display. Dylan Gabriel looked absolutely fantastic. Jordan James had two rushing touchdowns. He had Tez Johnson with 100 receiving yards in that game. Treshawn Holden, Terrence Ferguson, Evan Stewart really getting involved in that pass game there as well. And defensively for Oregon, everything really came together. Held the Beavers to only 309 yards of the total offense. And even though they did control that clock, did the Oregon State Beavers, Oregon was able to limit them offensively really, really well. The defense stepped up, played some big minutes. Guys, Oregon is starting to turn things around. They're starting to find their rhythm. Now, we, we need to see them play a, a quality opponent to really get... A, well, okay, so, sorry, that, that is not something that meant to uh, slip out there, but going on the road and playing in Corvallis, sneaky, tough place to play there. Oregon did prove a lot of really good things. I want to see what happens when they go on the road. And quality opponent was not the terminology I meant to use there. But when they go on the road and play a team, maybe like, uh, let's see, what are some of the road games they have coming up here? I mean, when they go on the road and play Michigan, I know it's not until uh, November. They have Ohio State coming in here in just about a month coming into e Eugene. I want to see how they play once they get into Big Ten form and if this is something that is going to stay consistent with Oregon before I rise them back up my polls. Penn State did have a bye week this past week and for the Penn State N Nittany Lions overall, again, you had a little bit of a scare against uh, Bowling Green this past week. You get a fairly easy one, actually pretty easy one against the Kent State Golden Flashes coming up this week. Uh, another mag school. We'll see if they can provide a, another max scare, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think Penn State should roll in that one. And then Tennessee, they just got done thrashing the Kent State Golden Flashes. They still look very impressive. Not much more to say about the Volunteers. They are still up here at number six. Okay, a change in my top five. I've just simply switched Alabama and Ole Miss. The reason being, look, Ole Miss has still looked very impressive. Jackson Dart has looked really good in the Ole Miss offense. Is still one of the best in college football. Defensively, they've gotten a lot better this season as well. It just feels like year after year under Lane Kiffin, that defense just continues to improve. But no, I want to talk about the Alabama Crimson Tide because if you didn't watch my weekly takeaway video i basically told you that guys alabama is still alabama the explosive plays were there the defense performed extraordinarily well and with all due respect to the wake forest team and deacons wisconsin is a better team both alabama and ole miss went on the road to play power five or power four now opponents alabama's opponent was tougher than ole miss and that's why i think alabama jumped him and i thought alabama all in all was just a ton more impressive i really like the way that alabama played in that game i think alabama is going to be one of the top teams to watch for in the country this season and uh yeah the, that's exactly why they moved up one spot there to number four okay 
for Georgia, Ohio State, and Texas. I'm going to lump all three of them in the one conversation because, yes, Texas had a very impressive win against UTSA, and Ohio State had a, a bye week. They haven't really played anyone in non-conference, and they still won't probably their toughest non-conference game to this point, though, when they play big noon kickoff against Marshall this upcoming week. And then Georgia, of course, we all know they struggled with Kentucky this past week. Well, Texas has been the most impressive. They have the biggest win. They should be the number one team in the, the country, right? When you talk about Georgia, Ohio State, and Texas, honestly, this is my preferred order right now. Yes, Texas has looked really, really good. They have a bigger win than Ohio State under their belt. So if you want to move Texas above Ohio State, that's not going to bother me one bit. Again, this is very arbitrary right now because you could easily look at those three teams and easily just say, okay, look, why is a Georgia, Ohio State, Texas, really you could make a, a three-way tie for them at first place. Obviously not something that I do. There are no ties in my poll. My preferred way of thinking this right now is, okay, projecting outward. Where do I think these teams are going to wind up? And I think it's going to be Georgia 1, Ohio State 2, and Texas 3. That's just the way that me, when I determine these tiebreakers, projecting outward, that's just the way that I see it finishing, right? But with all three of these teams right now, they clearly look like the best three teams in the, the country, and it's not close. Yes, Alabama looks good, but I still think there's a little bit of a gap between Bama and Texas, Ohio State, and Georgia, right? I still think there's that little bit of a gap. Georgia, don't doubt them after that Kentucky game. I know a lot of people are going to, and oh, Georgia's not the same as they have in the past couple of years. Guys, we've said that the past two years about Georgia, when they go on the road and struggle and look at what's happened, Georgia has been the same old Georgia. They still are winning football games. They still are playing really good football, even after they struggle against one opponent on the road in the SEC, guys. It's the toughest conference in college football. Ohio State's going to start to play some marquee opponents here in just a few weeks. They got Iowa. Then they have, of course, the game in Eugene against Oregon. And then Texas. I mean, look, they're still going to have a lot of big-time opponents here on the schedule. Georgia is still on that schedule. Oklahoma coming up in a couple of weeks there as well for Red River. It's going to be a really exciting race here to watch between those three teams. That's my preferred preferred order right now just as we sort of look forward and say okay where are these teams going to wind up but if you have a different order I mean look all that matters is right now Georgia Ohio State Texas I think are one two and three I think that's bona fide I think that's easy those are the top three teams in the country whatever order you have them in I don't think really matters too much as of right now but guys thank you for watching this video if you liked it uh, well I mean, make sure to tell me. Leave a like, subscribe, do anything you can to help support the channel. Remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. And I'll see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.